Welcome to our show, The World Brief. Today, we have some intriguing stories lined up for you. First up, a beluga whale named Valdemir, once suspected of being a Russian spy, has been found dead off the coast of Norway. This mysterious creature, which captured the world's attention due to its harness-marked equipment St. Petersburg, was tracked by marine biologists for years. The cause of death remains unknown, and a necropsy is planned to uncover the truth behind this fascinating tale. Next, we turn our focus to education as the Chinese University of Hong Kong, CUHK, business school continues to empower students with practical skills in a highly competitive global market. Ranked 36th globally, CUHK offers specialized master's programs across various sectors, ensuring that students gain real-world experience through internships and case studies. With applications for the 2025 academic year now open, the future looks bright for aspiring business leaders. Lastly, get ready for the Hong Kong Performing Arts Expo, HKPAX, debuting in October 2024. This exciting event aims to bring together performing arts professionals from around the world, fostering cultural exchange and collaboration. Following the pandemic, HKPAX will provide a vital platform for the arts community to reconnect and explore new possibilities. Join us as we witness the vibrant evolution of the art scene in Asia. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage of these captivating stories. South China Morning Post reports the tragic discovery of a beluga whale named Valdemir, believed to have been trained by the Russian Navy for espionage, found dead off the coast of Norway. The whale first captured attention in 2019 when it was seen wearing a harness labeled Equipment St. Petersburg, raising suspicions of its connection to Russian intelligence. Despite being spotted alive just a day before its death, Valdemir's lifeless body was discovered by Sebastian Strand, founder of Marine Mind, an organization dedicated to tracking its movements. The cause of death remains a mystery, with no visible injuries found during the initial examination. Valdemir, a relatively young whale, had become accustomed to human interaction, leading to speculation about its origins and training. In another article from South China Morning Post, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, CUHK, business school emphasizes its commitment to empowering students in an increasingly competitive global job market. Ranked 36th in the world and 10th in Asia, CUHK offers a diverse range of master's programs designed to equip students with practical skills and knowledge tailored to various industries. The success stories of alumni like Alex Wong and Hannah illustrate the effectiveness of Cuck's hands-on curriculum, which integrates real-world experiences and industry exposure. Through personalized career support and international learning opportunities, CUHK aims to cultivate a new generation of leaders ready to navigate the complexities of the global business landscape. The South China Morning Post highlights the upcoming Hong Kong Performing Arts Expo, HKPAX, set to take place from October 14 to 18, 2024, in the West Kowloon Cultural District. This inaugural event aims to serve as a significant platform for arts professionals from Asia and beyond to exchange ideas and collaborate following the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. HPAC seeks to bridge cultural gaps and promote artistic excellence through diverse programming, including showcases, forums, and leadership talks. The expo will feature a rich array of performances from both local and international artists, addressing pressing social issues while fostering dialogue on the evolving landscape of the performing arts. As the event approaches, it represents a hopeful step towards revitalizing the arts community and reimagining cultural exchange in a post-pandemic world. Associated Press reports that an official investigation into the tragic helicopter crash in May, which claimed the lives of Iran's President Ebrahim Raisi and seven others, attributed the incident to challenging climatic conditions. The Supreme Board of the General Staff of the Armed Forces revealed that the helicopter encountered complex weather patterns typical of the spring season, compounded by the sudden emergence of a thick fog that obscured visibility as it approached mountainous terrain. Notably, the investigation found no evidence of sabotage, confirming the crash's unfortunate nature rather than foul play. Foreign policy highlights the stark contrast between the electric vehicle, EV, markets in the West and China, where the latter has surged ahead, becoming the world's largest EV market. Patrick Schroeder emphasizes that while sales of large SUVs and pickup trucks have reached record highs in Western markets, EVs still represent a mere fraction of total car sales in the United States. The article questions the reasons behind this lag, exploring the geopolitical implications of U.S. tariffs on Chinese EVs and how they may hinder the green transition. As Tesla struggles to maintain its market position amidst fierce competition, the article serves as a reminder of the urgent need for Western governments to address their growing reliance on fossil fuel vehicles.
The South China Morning Post examines the United States' new Red Ventures program aimed at addressing economic security concerns related to technological innovation and competition with China. This initiative, launched by the National Security Agency, seeks to identify gaps in U.S. technology and create a pipeline for innovation to counter China's advancements. As U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan engages in discussions with Chinese leaders, the program reflects a broader strategy to bolster American competitiveness in the tech sector. Despite concerns over China's rapid technological progress, experts argue that the U.S. still leads in areas such as research and development, though the need for a focused response to China's industrial upgrades is increasingly pressing. South China Morning Post reports on the thrilling second week of the U.S. Open, where the absence of tennis giants Novak Djokovic and Carlos Alcaraz has set the stage for exciting matchups. Among the highlights is the clash between Alexei Popperin, the giant killer who stunned Djokovic, and the crowd favorite Francis Tiafo, who electrified the Arthur Ashe Stadium in his previous match. Tiafo, in high spirits, expressed confidence in his game, while Popperin acknowledged the need for a strong serve to counter Tiafo's aggression. The women's fourth round features defending champion Coco Gauff seeking redemption against Emma Navarro, who previously defeated her at Wimbledon, and China's Zheng Qinwen aiming to outplay Donna Vekic in a rematch of the Olympic final. In a tragic incident reported by the Associated Press, a truck crash in the Dominican Republic has left at least 10 people dead and 17 injured. The accident occurred in Azua, a community west of Santo Domingo, during the early hours of Sunday. Details surrounding the cause of the crash remain unclear, but local authorities were quick to respond, transporting the injured individuals to nearby hospitals for urgent medical attention. The community mourns the loss as investigations into the incident unfold. Steve Luton's long-awaited victory at the Indonesia Open, as covered by South China Morning Post, marks a significant moment in his career after a decade without a title on the Asian tour. Facing a nail-biting finish, Luton found himself in a playoff against Samson Zhang and Aaron Wilkin after a double bogey on the final hole. Despite the pressure, Luton capitalized on a fortunate break during the playoff, ultimately securing the win with a birdie. His triumph comes after finishing second in the tournament for two consecutive years, and he expressed immense relief and joy in finally breaking the long drought. Zhang's performance also stood out, as he secured his position for the next season, while Hong Kong's Tai Chi Ko showcased his talent with a strong finish in the tournament. South China Morning Post reports on the successful debut of the Art 021 Hong Kong Contemporary Art Fair, which attracted an impressive attendance of 30,000 visitors in its first three days, far surpassing initial expectations. Co-founder David Chow expressed hopes for the fair to become a long-term fixture in Hong Kong's art scene, aiming to position the city as a cultural hub for the global south. Notably, one of the most expensive pieces sold for around 4 to 5 million yuan, reflecting a shift in buyer mentality towards personal satisfaction rather than mere financial investment. Artists like Sahar showcase their works, with her modern macabre series highlighting the complexities of human vices through dark, symbolic imagery. The fair's focus on engaging new collectors and the wider community marks a fresh approach to promoting art culture in Hong Kong. South China Morning Post also highlights John Podesta's upcoming visit to China, which serves as a crucial opportunity for the Biden administration to solidify its climate legacy ahead of the presidential election. Podesta's trip is particularly significant as it could reset U.S.-China relations and allow for discussions on major climate issues, including energy transitions and methane regulation. With China needing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions significantly by 2035, the discussions could pave the way for a potential agreement on climate finance ahead of the COP29 climate talks. However, the outcome of the U.S. elections could dramatically alter the dynamics of these discussions, with the possibility of a more challenging environment if former President Donald Trump were to return to power. The visit symbolizes a critical moment for both nations to collaborate on climate goals, which could have lasting implications for global climate efforts. South China Morning Post further reports that despite rising geopolitical tensions, China continues to support its students in pursuing higher education in the United States. The China Scholarship Council announced it would fund 240 students to attend prestigious U.S. universities for master's or doctoral programs next year. This initiative underscores China's commitment to fostering academic exchange, even as many Chinese students face challenges such as visa denials and increased scrutiny when entering the U.S. The number of Chinese students in the U.S. has declined recently, but those receiving CSC scholarships are required to return to China after graduation, 
contributing to their home country's development. This program reflects China's ongoing investment in education and talent development, even amidst a complex international landscape. South China Morning Post reports on the competitive landscape of China's electric vehicle EV, market, highlighting the contrasting fortunes of major players in August. Leap Motor, backed by Stellantis, set a new record with 30,305 deliveries, driven by strong demand for its midsize SUV, the C16. In contrast, rivals Li Auto and Neo experienced declines in sales, with Li Auto's deliveries dropping 5.6% to 48,122 units. The market is characterized by aggressive pricing strategies and promotional offers as manufacturers vie for consumer attention amid concerns over overcapacity. Despite the challenges, NIO's new Envo brand is expected to boost sales in the coming months, while Xpeng and Zikr also reported increases in their deliveries, underscoring the dynamic nature of the EV sector. In another development, the South China Morning Post discusses the potential of China's C919 passenger jet to penetrate the global aviation market as Boeing faces ongoing technical and safety issues. The Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, COMAC, has begun delivering the C919 to major Chinese airlines, marking a significant milestone. The jet's entry into service coincides with a growing demand for environmentally friendly aircraft and the need for airlines to refresh their fleets. However, COMAC must address challenges related to safety certification, production capacity, and reliability to compete effectively with established giants like Airbus and Boeing. With over 300 C919 jets ordered by Chinese airlines, the C919 is positioned as a crucial player in China's ambitions within the civil aviation market. The New York Times reports on Ukraine's recent drone strikes targeting Russian energy facilities, marking one of the largest assaults since the onset of the conflict. Ukrainian forces launched 158 drones aimed at power plants and oil refineries, including sites in Moscow and the central Tver region. While the Russian military claims to have intercepted all the drones, local reports indicate that fires and explosions occurred at multiple facilities. This escalation reflects Ukraine's strategy to disrupt Russia's energy supply and undermine its military capabilities. As attacks intensify, the situation remains fluid, with limited independent verification of the impacts and growing restrictions on information from the Russian side regarding its oil industry. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Got a question in your mind? We'll find the answer, we'll be kind. Encyclopedia on everything. Life and love. Kids and grown-ups too We've got the
Kids and grown-ups too 